loosely based on a true story, and I mean loosely based, the town that dreaded sundown was a well-received 70s slasher. But is this one a potato sack wearing stalker, or just a potato? It again very loosely tells the story of the Phantom, a real life string of mysterious killings that terrorised the people of Texacana, Texas, in 1946. Uh, they became known as the Texacana Moonlight Murders, I believe, and claimed the lives of five people and left several others injured. This became quite a famous one for the uh, serial killer buffs, because nobody was ever actually caught. So, set in 1946, we see the Phantom on his killing spree, terrorising the locals and doing it all with a potato sack on his head. This likely being the inspiration for uh, Jason Voorhees' appearance in 1981's Friday 13th, Chapter 2. It's not exactly the most intimidating look, and I'll be honest, he lacks any real star-killer quality. His kills are highly meh, and there's one that involves a trumpet, and it's just plain silly. It takes you right out of the movie because it's so incredibly dumb. Now, the film is shot well. It certainly does look the part, just as long as the camera is pointed away from our stabby stabby potato friend. It also has some exceptionally well done narration, which really does the film a lot of good. I miss that. Not enough movies have narration anymore. I mean, it doesn't have to be at the Richard Dreyfus in Stand By Me level, but I like to see it, or rather hear it every once in a while. One thing the film struggles with, however, is mixed tones. This is a horror about a masked killer who is going around slashing and hacking his way through the community. So why is there some really ill-fitting comedy here? One of the deputies is so goofy you'd think you were watching Smokey and the Bandit. Sure, it's funny, it really is, but would Nightmare on Elm Street have had the same horrifying impact if Chris Farley had popped up half a dozen times doing his shouty and falling over comedy routine. I respect what they've done here. I, I do. They got a lot right. But they also got a lot wrong. And they kind of cancel each other out, leaving a distinctly average movie. I award the town that dreaded sundown a eh, very mixed 5 out of 10. So rant time, and kinda spoilers ahead. So let's talk about that trumpet kill. So he catches her, and he's going to stab her to death, as they do. But for some reason he thinks, hey, what if I were to tie my knife to the end of the trumpet and play it? then the blade would really shittily go back and forth. Honestly, the way he does it looks like it would barely even have penetrated the skin anyway. It's just the notion of it. Want a comparison? It would be like Freddy Krueger taking his glove off and trying, tying it to a mop to stab someone with it for absolutely no reason. Or Michael Myers stalking a girl, cornering her, and then getting out some sticky tape to attach the knife to a bottle of washing up liquid, then stabbing her while holding onto the bottle. It's all just so silly. And if you didn't hear there, even Kitty agrees. It was just fucking stupid. So, what did you think of the town that dreaded sundown? Do you think it's loyal to the source material? Where would you rate the trumpet kill on the slasher kill chart? Well, like this video, tell me in the comments below, and if you haven't already, 
please subscribe. Later, folks.